I promise we won't talk about math anymore in the podcast. Weird, gross, little trick, but it works like a charm. Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Myths by Mandy. My name is Amanda, and today we have episode 11 of the Myths by Mandy podcast. So if you're new here, pretty regular setup. I'll do maybe just a mini life update um, and then finish objects, whips, future planning because I did some swatching. I don't have any acquisitions to share with you this month. And then uh, some media recommendations that we'll get into. So as always, I put chapters at the bottom. So if you want to skip through me talking about myself, you can totally do that. No harm, no foul. Um, but yeah, let's just get into it. I feel like I just podcasted, but it was a month ago and now it's the end of February. So anyway, here we are feeling good. It's very mild here in DC. So like spring is on its way. I went on a walk today and like was just starting to see buds and little wildflowers. So I feel like the first, first signs of spring are upon us, which is crazy. So life update. I did just do a, um, a Q and a video where I talked a little bit more about my life. Got a cat. We had a housewarming party last night and it was lovely. It was so great. It was kind of like the first gathering like that I've had probably since pre pandemic. Uh, so it was really nice to get me and my boyfriend's friends together for that. But I talk more about that and you meet my cat in the knit and chat video. So I will let you go over there and not repeat information. And maybe if, if our little girl Sassy comes in, you can meet her because she's literally the love of my life. I'm obsessed. So with that being said, you may hear me do a little mini burp. I am drinking some ginger ale today. A little hungover, but I, I think an hour walk really knocked the hangover out. So all that aside, let's get into the two finished objects I have from this month. So the first thing that I finished is the Sophie Shawl by Petite Knit. And I knit the size small in Magpie Fibers, MCN, Swanky, DK, in the Colorway Bougie Beaver. So I bought this yarn to buy some winter accessories and I'm getting a lot of direct sunlight. So you might just see things come up in a few different ways. I'll try to show you in the least direct sunlight because that's the more accurate color story. Oh no, we're quickly losing the sun. Are we really getting too much sun? But it's this really like nice rose gold color. I kind of wish I went for a more bold color because I also knit a pair of gloves in this, but it's small and I had to kind of do my best guess of how much, I had two skeins, do my best guess of how much yarn I had and I still have some left over. Um, I didn't, I don't have a kitchen scale. I actually was inspired by this project to get one to be able to weigh my yarn and know how much I have left. Cause I think that's valuable information to have about your stash. Um, cause then I probably would have made this a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I really like it. Like I said, it's been very mild here. So I haven't really had a need for really heavy winter accessories. And I honestly run kind of hot these days. So I don't feel the need to be like, so bundled up and so this is nice just to throw on I've also been wearing it I wore it in my last video like with a white button down and just kind of like this and honestly I think I mean this is kind of cute and even with like a white t-shirt I think it'd be cute um just kind of as like a little scarf moment um so there's not too much to say about the pattern itself other than like I enjoyed making this I really after finishing the Whitmore cardigan, I really felt that I needed a break. Um, and I've been having a little bit of shoulder pain, um, especially. So like knitting and like wanting to finish a whole sweater and like wanting to make sweaters, it makes you obviously want to knit more. And so I just wanted to take a brain break and almost like a body break too, to just knit something not intensive and nothing that I felt like I would be like really focusing and clenching my body for. So yeah, I think I messed up counting the increases here. Like the triangles are a little uneven, but I think I did these two less often than I should have. But honestly, I think I like how it looks better. 
than this one, which is I think how the pattern should be. Um, but it, like you really can't tell and no one's really looking at the ends. So um, I'm not going to wax poetic about a garter stitch triangle shawl. Uh, I will say I like, cause everyone has truly made this or it feels like everyone has made this. Uh, I think it's really sweet that we've just kind of come back to making garter stitch scarves. Like, I think that's really nice. That's how I started knitting. I know that's how a lot of people start knitting. So to kind of come back to that, I think it's really sweet. And I really enjoyed that nostalgic aspect of it. So the, like, the kind of claim to this pattern is the built-in I-cord edging, which I didn't know how to do that. So I learned a new technique. Um, you just knit it as you go and it's super easy. And yeah, I think I will keep this in my back pocket for a gift pattern. Um, if I ever want to make a smaller, like little more ascot-y scarf, I wonder if I could kind of like make this, this could be like a huge Sophie scarf. I could do this. This is kind of cute, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't like wear this in my day to day. I mean, okay, this is not cute. It's kind of weird looking. <laughs> um, it's kind of weird looking, but actually I don't hate it. Something about this, something about the little ascot look, it's like very charming to me. I mean, it feels very European. And if I'm honest, I think a lot of what petite knit sells is just like Scandi girl vibes. And I am buying, I am purchasing the vibes. Um, that's neither here nor there. And I'm not making a comment on if that's good or bad, but I think it happens. Okay, this just caught, shh, Nikes. This just caught on my necklace. Oh no, what happened here? We'll figure it out. Anyway, you can't tell. That is the Sophie shawl. Yeah, there's really not much to say about it other than I enjoyed making it. And I know some people are like, why would you pay that for a garter shift triangle shawl? And I'm like, why would I pay that? But also, I just paid someone to do the math for me, even though the math's really simple. And I think the eye cord edging is really nice and I'm happy with the project. I'm glad that I made it. And yeah, I think I'll actually get use out of this smaller shawl as opposed to like a bigger shawl or a more complex shawl. I've never, I mean, I wouldn't even really call this a shawl. Like it's, it's a scarf, but um, I guess maybe the bigger ones are more shawl adjacent. Uh, but this feels very like scarf-esque to me and not like a triangle shawl. Like when I think of a shawl, I think something you can like wrap around your shoulders and like be cozy and warm. And this is more just like a a triangle scarf. And that, it, yeah, it's triangular. Not, it's like an isosceles triangle, right? <laughs> anyway, that's some geometry for you all. Yikes, I promise we won't talk about math anymore on the podcast. Okay, so that is the Sophie shawl. Very soft. The yarn was a dream to work with. And yeah, it was my first time with MCN, so which is merino, cashmere, and nylon. And yeah, I, I showed some gloves in my last podcast with this yarn. So I still have a little left. Maybe I can make a scrunchie or something just so I have like a full set of this cute rose gold accessory set. All right, all right. This is the Chelsea Toque by Kiyomi Bergen, and it's a really just gorgeous hat pattern. So last month I talked about my trials and tribulations with the Oslo hat, which Leslie from Knit California uploaded a video explaining to it. And I guess it just took like the 10th video tutorial of me watching someone make the Oslo hat for me to finally get it to click. And I finally got it, but it was a little too late. I had already finished this and I'm not, I don't really have much need for more hats, but it's this beautiful like lace ribbed hat. And I think it's just so cool. Um, I saw the pattern because, or I found the pattern because I was watching the Love Stitch knitting podcast and Tiara, excuse me, and Tiara had made it. And she was like, this is just like a cool girl hat. And I was like, that's what I wanted. Like, let me actually just try something completely different. I feel like from the Oslo hat and a fiber completely different. So I had a lot of fun making this. This is knit up in Neighborhood Fiber Co. Swanky, or not Swanky, Studio DK, and their 
Surrey Loft in the color Butcher's Hill. So Neighborhood Fiber Co. is actually a local like Baltimore DC yarn dyer and a lot of their colorways are named after places in Baltimore and DC. I think Butcher's Hill is in Baltimore. Um, and I actually purchased this at Rhinebeck, funnily enough. So um, actually my boyfriend got it for me, which was very sweet. Uh, so this is not full disclosure. I would never normally spend this much money on a hat, but I think it's really cool. And it was a really kind of, I think great pattern for this like special yarn use case, right? Like this was something very special and kind of like luxury. Um, I made a few modifications in that I didn't, oops, I didn't, I wove in the ends, but I haven't cut them off yet. <laughs> I actually wore this on the Metro and some like little kid was staring at me and I opened my selfie camera and I saw that like my the ends were poking out. I didn't learn. Anyway, I modified the cast on by just not doing a tubular cast on because I felt it was a lot of, I've never done one before and I felt like this was not the yarn in the gauge to try to learn one um, because it's so fluffy and the gauge is quite tight. And I was like, well, you're not really going to see the cast on edge that well because of the Surrey. Um, so I was like, mm, not doing that. But I just want to make a hat. So I didn't do that. I just did a regular long tail cast on, which is my usual cast on method. And, and then I did seven repeats of the lace instead of nine because my row gauge, I think, was quite big. So I think the, the usual pattern calls for an Aran weight wool. Um, I think some people make it with like a wool and a mohair. Um, and I, I had swatched this yarn and I was just like, well, I can just measure and see how it goes. And so after measuring, I was like, okay, I think seven's enough. And I'll put it on for you. It's so cute. And I love it. I steam blocked it. So before steam blocking, I didn't get this like, I feel like it's so hard to show hats, this shape that I wanted. Like I wanted, I was looking for a beanie and a hat that had like a little room on top, but not too much room. And I feel like that's honestly what I what drew me towards this pattern. Um, and the hat also comes in like three sizes. I picked the smallest one. I just kind of cast on and wrapped the cord around my head to see. And I believe I knit it on the intended needles, which were 4.5 needles. So it's a pretty tight gauge, um, but I think it's a really cool hat. I think the color's super fun uh, for winter. And it is a very warm fabric, but I think the lace like helps the hat breathe a little. Um, at first I was like, is this impractical to be knitting a hat with holes in it? But it actually kind of makes sense, um, at least for like how I run, like temperature wise, and also um, just the weather that I have here. So I wore it on a really cold weekend and it kept me warm. It keeps me nice and warm and toasty. And I just think it's so freaking cute. I think it's very cool girl. I know I keep saying that, not that we all need to be a cool girl, but like it makes me feel like a cool girl, you know? So very happy with it. And yeah, that is the Chelsea tube. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say about it. Um, I think the only other thing is, I mean, if you do make this, I think both the color and the, like the, <laughs> both the color and the haze of the, the Surrey and the halo of the Surrey aren't the best, I think, I almost said conduit, or aren't the, like, the best vehicle for this yarn or sorry, let me rephrase. I don't think that the haziness of the yarn and the colorfulness of the yarn um, lend particularly well to seeing the ribbed and the lace details of this hat. I still like that you get a hint of it, but you could make this in just a wool and get more of the effect of the hat. So I would encourage you to look at other patterns on Ravelry or on Instagram. Um, to kind of get the probably like more intended look of this hat. I would say this is a little, a little bit different. I think both with the gauge and um, the gauge, the fiber. Yeah, so I'm still really happy with it. I'm happy with the pattern and I think it'll be a great future make. If I want to make gifts or 
anything like that. My friend, my knitting friend Erin, knit Chelsea Toque for her friend. So, Chelsea tuking it up. It was just so cute. I'm really happy with it. So yeah, those are my finished objects. I really wanted to take a little break from sweater knitting. I, I felt like I was kind of slogging it. Like I finished that sweater for my boyfriend over Christmas, which I like pushed through. And then the Whitmore cardigan felt like it took a long time. I think cardigans just felt like they take longer because you're purling and you're not in the round. Um, and then I knew I, like, the next thing I wanted to make was a cardigan. So I was like, let's just take a break and like step back, chill out before we move on to the next thing. And so I'm happy with what produced of that. And I think I can get really caught up in thinking about what I want to make next. So usually I'm always like already getting excited about something before I'm halfway done with the project. I'm like thinking about the next thing. Um, but it's nice to kind of take breaks with these little projects. I think one, it's nice to have these little accessories. I think they can elevate your wardrobe or your home. Um, to, like if you make homewares and it's just like nice to give yourself that break, but also you get to keep up the momentum because you're making things quickly. So yeah, I would just, I don't know, recommend making small patterns if you're feeling stuck or you're feeling like, or overwhelmed at the thought of starting something big. I mean, that's kind of common sense, but I figured I'd just say that right now. And um, yeah, those are my finished objects for February. After I finished those two objects, I decided I was ready to cast on my next sweater project. So I have two sweaters that I wanna make this spring, winter before like warm weather knits get on my needles. And the first one is the Mauricia cardigan. And so I cast this on, this is by Burt and Rose Knitting. And it comes into a 5XL, let me check, XL and up to a 166 centimeter bust, inclusive of 8 to 12 centimeters of ease, which I think is like 5-ish inches of positive ease. I'm knitting side, the third size, and I'm knitting it in Knitting for Olive Merino Hell Double on 4.5 millimeter needles as uh, indicated. Note, now that I'm giving you all the facts, I have started updating my Ravelry and I've mostly backlogged it. Um, so I think I just want to be better about at least just posting a few finished notes about what I did and what I used um, and then just, you know, adding the pictures that I post on Instagram to the Ravelry project because I, I truly do get so much of a platform in other people's project notes. So love to spread, spread the wealth, share the love a little bit. So as you can see, I have split for sleeves already and I'm almost done with the first sleeve. Um, I'm not someone who usually will like put the body on hold and finish sleeves. I know some people do that and I was just kind of feeling like I needed a change in that the yoke felt like it took a really long time, which it did. I mean, something about cardigan yokes when you have it all like stretched out in front of you, you're like, this is really overwhelming. <laughs> So, um, I, I finished the yoke and let's talk a little bit about the pattern. It's made in a faux cabling pattern, which the, um, pattern provides a chart for. And you also do some German short row shaping, uh, as, when you cast on like the first few rows and the pattern is really in depth about the German short row shaping. Um, Alexandra like lists, lists it out step-by-step, step, row by row, like where you knit and like how far past the turn you go. So it walks you through, kind of holds your hand through the German short row shaping. But then after that, it's very like simple, like kind of limited instructions um, as far as the raglan, like the yoke shaping and then like se sleeve separation um, and knitting the body. So I would say I wouldn't say this is necessarily a beginner friendly pattern. Um, I talked about this lot, like a little bit in my last video and it's not like, oh, a beginner can do that. It's just like, I would recommend you a pattern that would give you more information before I recommended you this one. Um, and that's just kind of like some designers put more in, some designers market towards beginners, some designers market towards 
intermediate, advanced, whatever that means, people that have more experience. I think if I didn't know how raglan construction worked, I would have been kind of confused um, with this pattern. But it's definitely doable. And I would say the like the German short bro shaping in pattern can be tricky, uh, but it wasn't that hard. And you kind of really get into the swing of the pattern once you get going. I really like faux cabling. You do it on the Ingrid sweater. And yeah, I really liked, like, I liked it on there and I like it on here. I just love the texture. I did have, you can probably tell, like two of the raglan like, faux cables. I messed up the counting, but I don't think you can really tell. And I was like, I'm not going back to fix that. Like, that's something I'm like, it's, it's all around the sweater too. So I'm like, it could be an intentional design choice, but I don't know how to count. It took me a second to figure out how to count these stitches, um, like with the the you know that guy but I figured it out again math not my strong suit counting yoinks <laughs> so you also knit the um button band alongside which I really like and you even just keep it on the same needle so if you were watching me make the Whitmore cardigan you do knit the button band as you go but you keep it on DPNs and it can get quite fiddly um, and you don't do that for this one. So the button band is thick, but it's also this really fun, like twisted slipped detail, which I think looks great and you don't necessarily need it on smaller needles and I'm okay with it. That means I don't have to cast it on later. You will add, I will add a neckband. That's part of it. Uh, I might do that after this sleeve and just like do this in the wackiest order possible because I'm so kooky and crazy. Um, but yeah. I really like this pattern. I'm really excited about the color. I love working with knitting for Olive uh, Merino. And I'm doing a trick that I saw Emily from High Fiber Knits talk about where if you're pulling from a ball like this and you're, you're knitting double, you can pull from the, obviously the center and the front, like the, the outside of the ball. And then when you're done, you basically just have a loop at the end. And so to avoid having ends to weave in, you take the next ball and you take out the end, both ends, and then you spit splice them like around the loop to make a, like two interlocking loops. And that way you don't have any, and like I don't have any ends yet to weave in other than the cast on end. And then I am gonna have to weave this end because I, I broke the yarn there. Um, but yeah, that trick, I was like, ooh, this is nice. This is really nice. Well, the spit splice it like, I mean, do people, I mean, I use my spit. I don't know if people do that. It feels gross. It feels really gross. And then I, like, your hands smell like spit and wool. And then I just have to, obviously immediately wash my hands after, but what a, what a weird, gross little trick, but it works like a charm. And you can also just use water, but sometimes my spit is just more regularly available. Anyway, gonna stop talking about my spit now. And I'm not sure, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanna tell you about this guy. I ordered white daisy buttons for this. Um, I saw Alexandra's Garn make this sweater. She tested it and I think she has little daisy buttons on hers and something, I think maybe it's just the green color, but I'm getting botanical. I'm getting garden. So I think those will be really cute. And I really want to finish this. I really want to finish it soon, but it might take me a little bit, well, maybe like two more weeks. I would love to have it done. My birthday is March 12th. I would love to have it done by then. We'll see. It's I've been really kind of hammering this in, especially the sleeve. I'm like, I just want to get done. I really want to finish this and kind of move on to what I want to do next, which I'll talk about. Um, but I also don't want to rush the experience. But now look at that on my second card again. I'm like, okay, this is my last cardigan for a while. But I've enjoyed making cardigans. I think it's fun. They're great, obviously, layering pieces. And this will be warm, but I like I think it'll be a great transition piece for as little of a transition in between seasons I feel like we get. Um also, this isn't coming ar around all the way because the cord's short, but yeah, that's the Mauricio cardigan by Burt and Rose Knitting. And here's, here's a look at the sleeve. Like the texture is just delish and I can't wait to see how it blocks out 
Um, I did do a swatch, but you know, it blocking a swatch and seeing the difference is so much different than like seeing how an entire garment like blooms and then relaxes. Social media tip. If you ever just want a reel to go viral on knitting Instagram or on Instagram in general, just show a before and after of blocking. Like, my haven't gotten like hugely viral, but they're definitely my most popular reels. So easy peasy trick if you're gonna, if you're trying to fridge the algorithm gods. I, I have such a small limited patience for reels just because I think the interface of how you edit them on the app is horrible. I think it sucks compared to TikToks, but anyway, <laughs> trying to take care of my body as well because I am still having little like shoulder pain and I, I definitely don't want to push through that. So plug to listen to your body and I actually will have, I have a little like mobility class recommendation that I shared on my stories that I want to share here, um, but I'll share that at the end. So that is the Mauricia cardigan. I feel a little rambly today, but I also feel very chatty. So I'm hoping we're all like along for the ride. Let me go show you my next thing that I wanna make. I'm feeling like I want to speed through the Mauricia cardigan because the next thing that I wanna cast on is the Harlow Sweater V-neck addiction, addiction, addition by Kadri. And I want to do that in again, some very special yarn that I got at Rhinebeck this year. So this was a huge splurge for me. I said I would buy like one sweater quantity of yarn when I went there. I ended up snagging a sweater quantity of Roan DK by Primrose Yarn Co. I feel like I've talked about this before, but I just like can't stop thinking about it. And I really, really want to make it. And when I saw that Kadri was making this pattern, I was like, I need that. And I need to make it with this yarn. So it's one of those like, patterns and like yarn sweater combinations I feel very strongly about like like I felt very overtaken by this the spirits that be to make the Ingrid sweater I felt very like I need to do this and I feel that about the sweater um I don't have a I do technically one of my my second sweater was this like v-neck drop shoulder tunic and I love like the idea of it but there's so many things that I could have done my better. I actually talk about it in my like comparing two years of knitting progress video. Um, anyway, I have that and I just the idea, the v-neck. I, I like drop shoulder sweaters. I like how they look on me. So Anyway, I want to talk to you a little bit about this yarn because it's unlike any yarn I've ever used before. And I think I talked about this when I got it um, in one of my podcast episodes, but I'll talk about it again. So it is 60% American Superwash Merino and 40% domestic non-Superwash Merino. And on the Primrose Yarn Co. website, they explain that it's supposed to give you the best qualities of each garment. Um, making it durable, but also having really great memory. Uh, they claim that once you block this, the garment will not grow um, or stretch out. And also what's interesting is that I would think that the superwash wool is white and the, the domestic non is brown, but basically it's three plies. And so I think Two of them are white and one of them are, are, are brown. So it makes the color, I'll show you the swatch. It like gives uh, a little bit of dimension. So you can kind of see, it's not like variegated, but it's a little tonal. So it's this, this is the colorway fossil. Beautiful like purple with like a brown undertone. It's delicious. It looks like a plum. It's like, I mean, I love purple. It's my favorite color. And it looks different like in every light. Like you get it in the sun, it almost looks, I don't know, it, it, like a mime. <laughs> okay, um, it's just gorgeous, it's gorgeous. I made Gage, so that was very exciting. And yes, I'm, I think if I don't finish my Mauricia cardigan by my birthday, 
I'm going to give it like a fair shot, then I will cast this on. And the yarn, very interesting to work with. This is the first yarn that I've worked with that like still has wool fibers kind of like poking out of it. And I'll be honest for the price, I'm not sure how to feel about that. Part of me is like, this is sick, like, slay sheep, you're, I can tell that this is wool, but another part of me is like, shouldn't this be like a little more incorporated? So I don't know. This is where my like lack of yarn experience might be showing, but we have to learn by doing somehow, right? Uh, but I think overall, I'll be very happy with the finished drape of the sweater. Just, just this little swatch has given me so much excitement. Um, and I just could not contain myself this week and I had to swatch it and I like having a little a little swatch to show for for the pod for the cast so that is the Harlow sweater planning my little note on the Primrose Yarn Co yarn um yeah like there's like a twig in here I guess that happens right when your wool is more rustic but I don't think merino was supposed to be rustic. So I don't really know. It's soft. It's not rustic like that. But like, it's like, I don't know. Maybe because it's like milled domestically. Listen, it's only like two years away of me just getting a sheep and shearing the thing myself. I'm kidding. Um, I feel like it's a whole separate hobby, right? I'm sorry, I just keep looking at it. I think it's so pretty. I don't think that this color captures like all the nuance on camera, but I'm really happy with it. And I'm so excited to make this sweater. If you couldn't tell by my ranting and my rambling. So, great. All right, let's talk. I wanna talk about actually just briefly about knitting injuries and listening to your body and just like a brief recommendation um, before I move on to media recommendations. So like I said, I've just been having some issues here. I do follow the Knitting PT on Instagram and she's great and like has really great info about posture and different stretches that you can do. Um, but if you're looking for, first of all, let me just say, I am such a big believer of listening to your body. And I think especially maybe for content creators or people that like feel pressure to post on Instagram, it can feel like you need to be knitting things in order to post about them. Uh, but please don't put that over the safety of your body. I know it's like knitting, but still like you only get one and you, there's no need to. So that's my PSA. But if you want a broader, like, range, oh my gosh, <laughs> okay, you'll see in a second, range of, like, mobility-focused workout classes, again, this is not sponsored, no one told me to do this, um, and I talked about it on Instagram, I do these mat-based Pilates and mobility classes on a platform called Range. So this platform is run by one woman, her name is Kara Duval, and she was a Pilates, like is a Pilates teacher, and then like started making this platform and live casting sessions during the pandemic. Uh, and I actually found out about this from someone I follow on TikTok. Uh, I had struggled to find like a movement that felt really good and that I felt drawn to uh, in the pandemic. And I think because I feel so strongly about like meeting your body where it's at and listening to your body. I it kind of made me shy away, I think, from some of the boutique fitness that is very popular. And it's also very expensive here. Like I just, it's one of those things that's not what I want to spend my money on. So anyway, I pay for this platform. It's $35 a month, but Kara like will work with you if you want, if, if you need financial assistance. Um, and it's just, Pilates classes that have like a range of difficulty and intensity. Um, and then also a lot of like short workouts, like mobility routines, like really focusing on the function of your body and making sure that you can do things for a really long time, like as you age. Um, and I think it's a great platform and I just want to plug it 
it's been so helpful for me and I found out about it from word of mouth. So I thought I'd just take a second in the podcast to say like, oh, if you're, I don't know, it's not obviously like she has a class for like knitting related injuries, but I think to have a workout or a movement routine kind of focused on mobility and functionality is good for someone for people that do a lot of repetitive motions in their hobbies. So I'm not a doctor. I don't know anything about anything, but this is something that I really enjoyed and I thought I'd just pass it on. I wouldn't say like, oh, it's even like directly healed me or done anything like that, but it's nice if I'm not like my shoulders hurting and she'll have classes that are like shoulder like flush or like shoulder rinse, shoulder mobility. You can do like a quick 15 minute mat workout that's really like breath focused and it feels really good. So that's my little plug. And let's move on to media recommendations on the cast. What if I start calling it the cast unironically? Would you hate me? I wouldn't blame you if you did. So today for media recommendations, I have a book and a show. And I will be so honest, they are very popular. One more recently, and the other is just a very famous well-known television show. And they're going to be like, why are you recommending me watch this 20-year-old show? And I'm going to be like, sorry, I'm watching it now, and I think it's great. Spoiler alert. Anyway, the book is I read for my book club. We're reading I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, and it is fantastic. I've read, read a lot of memoirs. Like, I went through a big phase, especially of reading memoirs written by women, like women celebrities in my early 20s. Don't know why. It was kind of interesting, but like after a while, they kind of all start to sound the same. Um, especially some some writers, they like really like gear their writing to like a young, like, hey girly millennial audience, and that really wears on me. That's not what Jeanette's book is like at all. Um, if you're unaware, like huge trigger warning for eating disorders, like mental illness and addiction and substance abuse, but um it's really fantastic. I mean, it's like a horrible story of her journey as a child actress and her relationship with her mother who's abusive and um, her mother's, you know, ultimate death and like Jeanette's healing after that. So I watched iCarly when I was little and my boyfriend and I both read the book for the book club and we went back and watched an episode of iCarly and it was just like haunting. And I think a lot about one, childhood actors, and now in this day and age also, like mom influencers and family influencers and people that like have unregulated, have made income off their children in an unregulated manner. Like there's no laws protecting these children that like their families make shit ton of money off of. I find that like horrifying but also fascinating um, and just thinking about everybody's digital footprint but yeah I'll just say like it, it touches on you know childhood actors and I think it, it's part of a larger conversation that you know thinking about like the Free Britney movement and looking back even just to a short time ago, looking how we treated young women in the entertainment industry, it's like sick. It's like so disgusting. Um, so I feel like a lot of those themes have kind of been prevalent in like social commentary and like, uh, you know, as older stars come out and say like, well, actually this was like incredibly abusive <laughs> and I have a lot of trauma from this. It's like, ooh, like this is really not great. So anyway, that is my book recommendation. I know it's a very popular book, but thought I'd just put in that there. If you need another person to tell you to go read it, I would recommend it. And I'm also, I just started Ann Patchett's collection of essays. I think I'm going to hit a huge Ann Patchett phase after this and like go into all of her novels. I've read Commonwealth and The Dutch House, and I've loved both of them. And like, I still think about The Dutch House and like, I think about the characters and I just think like her style of novel writing is, I mean, I think she's very talented, but like, I love the sprawling kind of like generations long like drama about families and 
Like, that's great. So, that's books. My boyfriend and I decided to start watching The Sopranos for the first time ever. And let me tell you, if you've never seen it, it is fantastic television. Um, and you're probably like, okay, what? Um, I was, I think we just need something to watch. We've never seen it. Obviously, I feel like it's almost required reading. It's so good. And post White Lotus, a young Michael Imperioli's in it. And he's hot. It's Christopher. And then I can just walk around doing my New Jersey, Long Island accent. I know it's not the same thing at all, but things kind of sound the same to me. But um, it's been great. We just finished the first season. It's not, I mean, it's obviously violent. And I think maybe at the time it was kind of like, Ooh, scary but I think compared to like things that I've seen like Game of Thrones it's not that gory at all well it's not not gory but it's not like gratuitous it is violent but it's not like ugh, disgusting I would say uh and I'm a little sensitive to things and I'm also like I don't like super love watching a lot of really intense television I hate to be the person like I feel like I'm sensitive to it but I do feel like I feel the effects of it when I'm like watching really heavy stuff and like after a long day of work sitting down and watching like this like grueling complicated complex storyline full of like betrayal and violence sometimes that can really get to you uh and that's often why I defer to reality television because I feel like it's just like ah, okay this is insane but like not in a way that stresses me out like in a way that's actually deliciously entertaining uh but I think it it, it toes the line of being like where you're interested in the storyline but it's not like keeping me up at night so I mean yeah literally it's one of the best television shows ever made so I think it's kind of dumb that I'm recommending it to you but it's what I'm watching and I gotta say they're right it's good turns out <laughs> I hope I offer some value to you all. And if not, that's okay too. We, we don't have to be offering value to everyone and everything that we do. So with that, I think that brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you for sitting and chatting with me today. Uh, I really do appreciate you all being here. I think we hit 4K recently, which is just so exciting. And it's really kind of wild that people want to like hear me talk and spend time with me on the line. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye. <music>